There are times when simplicity, and that sort of is the name of this fly, uh, are a necessity for producing uh, streamer flies or bait fish imitations that could be made quickly and in most cases cheaply, uh, particularly if uh, you were perhaps a guide who uh, just finished a day on the water and ran short of flies and you have a booking tomorrow. So you can stay up half the night producing really uh, complicated patterns uh, or you can produce something that um, will use virtually any material that you might have uh, that fills the need and, um, and is very quick and very inexpensive um, to tie. And in this case, I'm just going to take some monofilament tying thread, bring it back along the hook shank to the spot where I typically stop, which is when the thread hangs between the point of the hook and the back edge of the barb. In this case, I can make it spin nicely. Um, and I'm going to take some ripple ice fiber minnow mix, is what it's called. Uh, it's basically a long, a long fiber dubbing, and you can use shorter dubbing. Uh, it's been done before and actually been on the internet. Um, and you can take a bunch of it, like so, and fold it so that you have twice as much material now to make a wing or tail on a fly. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and stick it on the hook shank so that the tips are about one and a half to two times as long as the shank of the, the hook, um, or shorter if you prefer. And we're just going to tie it right on the hook shank, keeping everything more or less on top. Tie it down nice and tight. And then I'm going to take my tying scissors and take this folded over portion here in the front and I'm just going to cut it into single strands and take that and fold it back. And rather than doing what you would do with a hollow fly, I'm going to go right around the material and make a little bump there and then bring the thread in front of it. Now this may seem a little long and straggly for making the wing of a fly because it all hangs out there and it's messy, but we'll fix that later. You've heard that I'll fix it later stuff before with people tying flies. Well, I'm going to take some more and I'm going to take that and I'm just going to lay it on top like that and I'm going to tie it in so it's sticking out front and back like that and I'm just going to take this and fold it back and I'm going to tie that down, same way, and make a couple turns in front. And eh, eh, some's good, more is better. We'll take another batch, and we'll just lay that on top of there. And I'm sliding it a little forward so I don't have too much stuff away in the back. And I'm going to tie that down just like I did before. wrap that on there like that. Now, that obviously doesn't look very neat. So, and it's gotten a little long, so I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to just sort of put them at a steep angle like that and I'm going to move them back and forth as I cut so they uneven the ends. And voila, a nice more neatly, uniformly long wing. But it's kind of rough on the sides. So we'll take the scissors and we'll lay them on that side and cut off that material. And we'll lay them on that side and we'll cut off that material. And we got something that looks sort of like a bait fish there. Yeah, not me. Um, and then I'll go to another material. In this case it's Orvis Light Bright, and this happens to be a green-black combination, very dubbing light stuff, made up of 
some flash and other stuff and I'm going to just sort of lay that on top and I'm going to tie that down and then I'm going to take the piece in front here that's sticking out over the hook guy, and I'll just fold that back and tie it down. Well, lo and behold, I've gotten up to the eye of the hook, so I'll just make a head. And I'll tie that off. Yeah. We'll just do a little more trimming. More neatness. And if you want to be really neat, don't sweep up your bench, your pants, the floor later. <laughs> But basically, we have a sort of bait fishy type shape there. Uh, we might want to make that head stay put. With a bit of head cement. And then, I like to turn turn everything right on the side. So I can see what I'm doing because I'm mostly blind. Um, comes with age. And take an eye and right at the back edge of the little head that I made, right where it starts to become fiber, I'm just going to stick one of these self-adhesive eyes on there. And I'll take a second one and turn this thing over and put it in the same place on the other side. It's nice when creatures have eyes about the same distance from their mouth on both sides of their head. They sort of look better. Uh, I'm not sure that fish would pay a lot of attention to those details. But we can take some UV varnish then and put some right over the eye, across the top of the head, right over the other eye, And cook it with my little UV light. By rotating the vise, I tend to keep things relatively uniform. But these eyes will never move. And uh, it sort of locks everything together. Now, if you were tying a big fly really long, and you were afraid that this material would wrap around the hook shank, you could run some of that UV material along the bottom of the hook shank and cook it in place, and that will stiffen the whole thing. You can see when this UV material sets up, because it gets a little dull, and I like to put a Bit of a coating of head cement over it because that brightens it back up. And there you have, very quickly, a bait fish imitation. In fact, you could have a lot of bait fish imitations in a very short period of time, and they could vary from this number one hook to this one odd hook 
to something much longer. You can take your old box full of discarded flash that you never use anymore and you can create flies out of almost anything. Almost anything at all. Even old Christmas tree tinsel. <laughs>